Thank you to everyone for joining us today. I'm Myron Brilliant, the Executive Vice President of the U.S. Chamber in charge of international affairs, and I'm so delighted to welcome you all to the official launch of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. The U.S. Bangladesh Business Council is U.S. Chamber's 20th, 20th, let me underscore that, bilateral council and a testament to our confidence in the opportunity that Bangladesh represents for U.S. businesses. I can think of no better time to launch this new council uh, than at, as Bangladesh celebrates its 50th anniversary of its independence. Congratulations to Bangladesh and to the people of that country. As we emerge from the pandemic, this world is at a real turning point. Bangladesh is strategically positioning itself to compete in a fast changing global environment uh, where the motto is run faster, run faster. At the same time, American companies are also rethinking their international partnerships and priority markets. And Bangladesh is getting more attention from American companies in a wide variety of sectors. The focus on poverty reduction, health, education, and women empowerment. Bangladesh has really become a global growth model lauded by international institutions and the business community. Bangladesh has also demonstrated remarkable resilience during the pandemic, thanks to the investments in the digital economy and an online workforce, making it well positioned to support post-pandemic economic recovery. The remarkable leadership in the government led by Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is really what has contributed to the great success of Bangladesh these past few years. Bangladesh is poised for success in the 21st century and will serve as a critical partner for the United States in efforts to preserve a free, open, resilient, and economically integrated Indo-Pacific. Bangladesh has also been a leading voice in climate discussions, an issue at the top of the agenda for both the U.S. government and American businesses. American businesses have taken notices. Our companies are pleased to see such strong support uh, as we launch our new council. And we're delighted to have so many American iconic companies contributing and encourage so many more companies to take a fresh look at Bangladesh. What will the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council do? Of course, there is more work to be done to promote a stronger bilateral relationship. On behalf of our members, the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council has already begun our advocacy and engagement work in areas like energy, healthcare, and nutrition, data governance, and agriculture. We're advocating at the highest levels for market reforms, trade facilitation, and regulatory changes to improve the ease of doing business in Bangladesh. These efforts are critical to attracting diversified American business and supporting Bangladesh's global and regional competitiveness. As just one example, Bangladesh has become one of the world's fastest growing economies through a focus on technology and digital innovation, which really has allowed innovative U.S. companies to partner with counterparts in Bangladesh. To build on this impressive foundation, Bangladesh must ensure that American businesses and the larger investor community have a seat at the table for conversations on building a transparent and predictable policy environment. I often talk about the importance of leadership, and I'm so pleased to announce that Nisha Biswal will serve as president of the newly created, newly launched U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. As Assistant Secretary for South and Central Asia during the Obama administration, Nisha was critical and instrumental in launching the U.S.-Bangladesh Partnership Dialogue and has maintained close relationships in Bangladesh for many years. And I am personally very pleased that she's taken on this role, um, and I am confident that she will continue to strengthen the work we do in the bilateral relationship. But she can't do it alone. She'll have the strong support of the U.S. Chamber, and she will work along one of the Chamber's brightest young talents in Sid Mayra. And Sid 
is someone who I know has committed a lot of time personally uh, to building up and getting to this point of launching the council. So with Nisha and Sid and the entire chamber team behind it, I'm really excited also about the corporate leadership uh, that we have now in place to help cement the important role of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council as an advocate of this bilateral relationship. So let me also announce that the council will benefit from the strong leadership of its board of directors, led by Chevron's Jay Pryor, Vice President for Business Development, as the inaugural chair. We'll hear from Jay and some of the other members of the board later in this program. But Nisha, I turn this over to you now to talk about the rest of the program and the work ahead. Thank you very much. Myron, thank you so much. I am really excited to be taking on the role of president of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. In the last decade, I've seen firsthand the strides that Bangladesh has made in education, in health, in achieving the Millennium Development Goals and progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals. Prime Minister Hasina can take pride in the fact that the economic reforms that um, her government has ushered in um, has really led to a fast growing economy, reductions in poverty, improvements in productivity and increased resilience to disasters and diseases. It is no surprise that Bangladesh's investments in its people, its economy, its education, and its women uh, has resulted in Bangladesh becoming a middle-income country set to graduate from the UN's LDC list by 2026. For the United States, Bangladesh is an important and long-standing partner. Its strategic location, its significant contributions to regional and global security, its uh, active engagement on combating climate change, um, and many other international and global issues make it a valuable partner. And the United States remains one of the largest investors in Bangladesh, the largest importer of Bangladeshi products, and at the same time, in 2020, we also saw Bangladesh become an important export market for the United States, representing over a billion dollars in agricultural products uh, from the United States to Bangladesh, a new area of uh, growth in the U.S.-Bangladesh trade corridor. Now, while we all have work to do around the world to overcome the global COVID pandemic, I am confident that Bangladesh is well positioned for a robust recovery. Indeed, it is this bullish confidence in the country's future that propelled us to launch the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. However, we know that there is still more work to be done uh, to continue to grow this economy and meet its full potential. And Myron mentioned some of the areas uh, in the ease of doing business, in the air, in trade facilitation, uh, and in policy formulation that we hope to be able to engage with the government on as the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. We are comprised entirely of business-driven uh, platform that comp where American and international companies have come together to collectively voice their commitment to working with and investing in Bangladesh. Today, we'll hear from many of these corporate leaders on why the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council is important to them. Uh, we will hear from U.S. and Bangladeshi government officials on the how the deepening uh, economic partnership between our two countries is important also to the strategic relationship between our two governments. And we are honored to have with us uh, the Prime Minister of Bangladesh, uh, Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina, to provide an inaugural address on the launch of the council. But before we proceed with today's program further, let me recognize, first of all, the generous support of our sponsors. Uh, thank you to our platinum partners, Chevron, uh, Accelerate Energy, MetLife, and Visa. And thank you to our gold partners, Abbott, Chenier, Facebook, Google, MasterCard, and Uber. We're also just very appreciative of the strong support of our newly formed board of directors, which Myron referenced. Um, as, as Myron said, the board is going to be uh, 
led by Jay Pryor, Vice President of Business Development at Chevron. Uh, Chevron has been a long-standing investor in Bangladesh, and Jay has been committed to the U.S.-Bangladesh relationship uh, for many, many years. Uh, he will be joined on the board with, by Elena Butarova of MetLife, uh, Rafael Frankel of Facebook, Stephen Kobos of Accelerate Energy, uh, Ambassador Demetrius Morantis of Visa, Mahesh Balashikar of GE, and Kevin Riepke of the U.S. Soybean Export Council. And now I would like to welcome uh, to the screen uh, our board chair of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council, Jay Pryor. Jay, welcome and thank you for joining us here today for the launch uh, of the Bangladesh, uh, U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. And thank you for your longstanding uh, commitment to the U.S. Bangladesh Economic Partnership, the uh, many, many years of experience you bring to engaging with Bangladesh. We are delighted to have you lead the board and to have you here for kicking off and launching the council. So, Jay, over to you. Thanks, Amisha, and good morning. I'm so pleased to be here today with Her Excellency Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. All our friends from Bangladesh, all their friends from around the world, and the business community on this suspicious day, the launch of the U.S.-Bangladesh Business Council. The timing of this event couldn't be more perfect. It follows a significant milestone of 50 years of independence for Bangladesh back on March 26th. It's an especially momentous occasion as this year also marks the birth century of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mojibur Rahman. On behalf of the new council, I'd like to thank Her Excellency for a video keynote to inaugurate the council, as well as the chamber's Nisha Biswal and her wonderful team for hosting us here today on Zoom. I'm truly honored to represent Chevron as the inaugural chair of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council and to lead the group of global leaders who are committed to strengthening the U.S. Bangladesh corridor. The U.S. Bangladesh Business Council is a reflection of the need for a dedicated platform to understand and partner with the Bangladesh of the future, one that is sustainable helps reach Bangladesh and its economic development goals, and by doing so, creates a business environment that empowers Bangladeshi women, enables small business growth, strengthens communities through a better access to healthcare, employment, and also energy. In Bangladesh, Chevron produces natural gas from three fields with a workforce of over 2,000 Bangladeshis to supply more than half the country's natural gas needs. We're proud of what we've achieved together with the government for more than 25 years. Chevron's goal is not just to deliver safe, reliable, and affordable energy, but to also support the sustainable development of the communities in which we operate. We're about enabling human progress through partnership. Energy opens the door to education, to sanitation and healthcare, and to steps for an economic pathway to Bangladesh of the future. Chevron reiterates its commitment to Bangladesh in our partnership with local communities, host governments, and service providers. And to our local labor force, the human energy that's driven our accomplishments. Chevron deeply values its relationship with the Prime Minister and the government of Bangladesh and appreciates the support which allows Chevron to invest in Bangladesh and contribute to the nation's energy security. We're now entering a new era for Chevron in Bangladesh, and we look to build upon the current partnership with government. I'm excited about the opportunities ahead and look forward to working with you on a shared vision for Bangladesh. And now for the main event. It's an incredible honor to introduce Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina, the Prime Minister of the Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, a fearless leader 
who's dedicated her life to democracy, economic growth, and the elimination of poverty. Prime Minister Hasina assumed the office on January 7, 2019, for the fourth time after her party, the Awami League, led alliance won parliamentary elections. Sheikh Hasina is the eldest of five children and the daughter of the father of the nation, Bunga Bungdu Sheikh Mujabur Rahman. And she's committed her life to public service and her country for over 40 years after becoming unanimously elected as the president of the Bangladesh Awami League in 1981. Since 2014, her government's landmark achievements include elevating the country to lower middle income status, re resolving the 68 year old long border dispute with the Indian government, raising per capita income, decreasing the poverty rate, and helping Bangladesh take the important step of officially being eligible to graduate from the least developed country status. All of these achievements mean that Bangladesh is on the way to achieving Her Excellency's goal of becoming a developed country way before 2020, uh, 2040. The Prime Minister's accomplishments and accolades are too many to really name. She's received countless honorary degrees and awards from around the world, including the United Nations highest environmental accolade, Champion of the Earth Award in 2015. She continues to be a strong supporter and an advocate for international cooperation. The Prime Minister recently wrote an article on the importance of international cooperation to help in the fight against COVID, and another on the stronger global action needed to help the refugees. And with that, Prime Minister, we're delighted to hear your keynote remarks and for you to inaugurate the Council. Thank you. <laughs> It gives me immense pleasure to join the business leaders from the United States and Bangladesh at the launching of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. The launching of the Council is taking place at a time when we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of the glorious independence of Bangladesh and the birth centenary of the father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Bangladesh has earned its independence through a nine-month bloody war in 1971, sacrificing the lives of three million martyrs and the honor of 200,000 women. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman laid down the foundation of a prosperous Bangladesh on the ashes of the war ravaged country. I have taken over his unfinished work of realizing his dream of a golden Bangladesh free from poverty, exploitation, and economic disparity. In the last one decade, we have made remarkable progress in socioeconomic fronts. The strength of Bangladesh's economy has shown great resilience even during the COVID-19 pandemic. Bangladesh received the final recommendation of the UN in February last to graduate from the LDCs. Bangladesh is now marching towards achieving the target of becoming a high income, developed and prosperous country by 2041. The United States has remained a strong partner in our journey towards democracy and development. It is the largest source of foreign direct investment, a long-standing development partner, and an important source of technology and training. We buy considerable amount of industrial raw materials and consumer items like 
cotton, soybean and wheat from the United States. All these items enjoy zero tariffs in Bangladesh. It is important that both the countries provide adequate policy support to further expand bilateral trade. While Bangladesh's dependency on foreign aid has reduced substantially, the need for foreign direct investment increased to create employment for millions of youths. Bangladesh's sustained economic growth, rapidly expanding domestic market and growing connectivity with a vast regional market of 4 billion people makes it a promising destination for U.S. business and investment. We are constantly improving our physical, legal and financial infrastructures to facilitate foreign investment. My government is establishing 100 special economic zones for rapid industrialization. We are offering one special economic zone for American companies for manufacturing facilities. Digital Bangladesh has been an integral part of our vision 2021. I want to thank my ICT advisor, Sajib Wazed for his support in the planning and implementation of our vision of a modern Bangladesh capable of using technology to improve transparency in governance and spur economic development. Today, Bangladesh exports more than US dollar 1 billion worth ICT products to over 60 countries, the US being the top export destination. According to the US AIDS Comprehensive Private Sector Assessment 2019 for Bangladesh, the ICT industry is expected to grow nearly fivefold to reach nearly 5 billion by 2025. Bangladesh is now developing 20 high-tech parks for ICT industries with local and foreign investments. We are offering one high-tech park for ICT investment by U.S. companies. The launching of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council reflects the growing interest of the U.S. business community about investment and doing business in Bangladesh. I hope it will help expand economic partnership between our two countries. My government will continue to support the activities of U.S. Bangladesh Business Council in the coming days. Well, thank you, Madam Prime Minister, for those inspiring and insightful remarks. You have certainly set an ambitious path for us and for the partnership between the United States and Bangladesh. You know, the last time that we had, uh, that I had the privilege and the honor of meeting with the Honorable Prime Minister uh, was in New York uh, in uh, 2019 before uh, we uh, were, you know, hit with the coronavirus pandemic. And at that time, we made the commitment to launch the council. So today's milestone is possible only because of that strong leadership and support by the Prime Minister herself, and we are grateful for that. And in keeping with the Prime Minister's urging, we are committed to uh, undertake a executive mission to Bangladesh as soon as we are able to travel uh, after the, uh, the pandemic. Um, it is now my absolute honor, joy, and privilege to bring on the screen two dear friends whom I have had the pleasure to work with and get to know over the years, uh, particularly starting during my time as Assistant Secretary of State. We're so privileged to have with us today Ambassador Marsha Bernica, Senior Official for Economic Growth, Energy, and Environment at the U.S. State Department. 
um, who has also served as the U.S. ambassador to Bangladesh from 2015 to 2018, uh, as well as to Senegal, Guinea-Bissau, um, and is also a recipient of the Secretary's Distinguished Service Award. Welcome, Marcia. I um, also want to uh, welcome uh, to the program the Honorable Sajib Wazed, who of course needs no introduction in Bangladesh and is known throughout the country uh, simply as Joy. But Sajib has been instrumental, as the Prime Minister noted, instrumental in formulating and implementing the vision of digital Bangladesh positioning Bangladesh to thrive in the increasingly important and all present digital economy. And we're so privileged to count him as a friend, a supporter, and really a mentor in how to drive the US-Bangladesh economic partnership forward. So thank you, Sajib, for joining us today as well. Um, you know, as we heard from the Prime Minister, there is just enormous potential for this important strategic relationship between our two countries and this expanding economic partnership. And so uh, thank you for joining us. And Marsha, why don't I turn to you next uh, to offer your thoughts? Assalamu alaikum, namaskar, good evening and good morning. Thank you so much for that warm introduction, Nisha. It is um, I can't think of a better person to be establishing and leading this um, very important organization. And Joy, what a pleasure it is to see you again, as well as to see the Honorable Prime Minister, if virtually, um, after, after too long a time. It is a great honor to address you all as we celebrate the inauguration of the U.S.-Bangladesh Business Council. The United States is proud of the partnership that we have built with the Bangladeshi people since Sheikh Mujibur Rahman courageously led a proud and determined people to achieve their independence 50 years ago. Congratulations to Bangladesh on meeting this milestone. How fitting it is that we honor that important anniversary today by launching the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. President Biden and Secretary Blinken are committed to strengthening our relationship as we address some of the most pressing regional and global challenges together, including the Rohingya humanitarian crisis and our global challenge to tackle climate change. Facing long odds of success at independence, Bangladesh came to wisely nurture a market economy to develop a world-class textile industry, the second largest exporter of ready-made garments in the world that has empowered its women and these remarkable women and the sector that they built played a leading role in driving Bangladesh's dynamic economic growth, which will soon result in the country's remarkable graduation from least developed country status. Bangladesh's impressive economic sector provides a solid platform on which to expand and deepen our bilateral relationship. Recognizing this, last September, our two countries held a high-level consultation on economic, economic partnership, a first to lay the groundwork for deeper bilateral cooperation in several key areas, including energy, infrastructure, agriculture, the environment, transportation, and of course, information technologies. The high-level consultation was designed to focus on the true source of economic growth in both of our countries, our private sector. The U.S. Bangladesh Business Council will harness this strength for the benefit of both of our economies. This is especially timely as we recover from the economic effects of COVID-19. The Council's diverse board reflects the impressive potential Bangladesh holds and the strong contributions companies representing the key sectors of energy, digital technology, financial services, and agriculture can make. Bangladesh's sustained economic growth and enormous potential has attracted the attention of these and other top U.S. companies, many of which are participating in this event. These companies are poised to further catalyze Bangladesh's economy and business environment by unleashing the full range of benefits that U.S. companies bring. These benefits include technology and business know-how, knowledge transfers, capital and investment, 
as well as corporate best practices, such as zero tolerance for corruption and stakeholder inclusion through corporate social responsibility. These benefits help ensure that every dollar invested maximizes production, boosts exports, and fuels economic growth that Bangladeshi leaders, beginning with Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, and today led with such passion by the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, recognized as the secret to Bangladesh's success. The U.S. Bangladesh Business Council and the American private sector will be partners to help Bangladesh reach the ambitions laid out in its Bangladesh vision 2041, including to become a high-income country. We have already seen some of this cooperation in action. U.S. companies operating in Bangladesh are bringing sustainable best practices and making unique contributions, such as local community economic development and innovative AI-powered flood alerts. A U.S.-Bangladesh partnership achieved Sheikh Mujibur Rahman's extraordinary vision of launching Bangladesh into space with the Bangabandhu One satellite. And in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, it was Bangladeshi companies who stepped up to play a critical role in establishing more diverse and secure global supply chains, exporting valuable PPE to the United States. Looking to the future, we fully expect U.S. and Bangladeshi companies to partner in such fields as renewable energy and digital services to continue Bangladesh's economic ascent. At the same time, these collaborations will ensure the high standards across the supply chain desired by sophisticated global consumers are reached. Adopting the Cotton Trust Protocol and similar sustainability programs will ensure that workers earn a fair wage and enjoy rights protected under the law. Well, I'm sorry, um, Nisha, can, can you hear me? Oh, I'm, uh, Oh, okay, um, sorry. Uh, and and uh, we'll ensure that workers earn a fair wage and enjoy rights protected under the law while using ethically sourced materials. U.S. private sector companies operating in Bangladesh are instrumental in contributing to an improved business environment. But the U.S. government is, is also playing a pivotal role by providing a wide range of technical assistance this includes in advising on how to reform procurement guidelines, helping to establish an independent power system operator, and providing guidance on Bangladesh's AI policy to help create an even more successful business environment. The U.S. continues to look for ways to help make Bangladesh more attractive for investment, which in turn provides for the transparency and rule of law that all companies thrive in. Similarly, we look forward to welcoming Bangladeshi investment into the United States from the country's increasing, increasingly internationally competitive companies. President Biden has emphasized the challenge of climate change, stating that the United States and the world face a profound climate crisis. And by placing climate change at the center of our foreign policy, diplomacy, and national security, Bangladesh's leadership in addressing climate change offers the United States and the world a great partner to tackle this climate crisis. As president of the Climate Vulnerable Forum and the Vulnerable 20 Group of Finance Ministers, Bangladesh has a leading voice and can make irreplaceable contributions toward a successful COP26. As a climate vulnerable country, Bangladesh will require significant climate adaptation and resilience, especially in view of its increasingly ambitious climate goals. U.S. companies are well placed to deliver many decisions Bangladesh will need to sustainably grow its economy. This is an exciting time in U.S. Bangladesh relations, and it is particularly timely. It is a particularly timely moment to inaugurate this organization to support closer U.S.-Bangladesh economic cooperation. I congratulate the new U.S.-Bangladesh Business Council and look forward to engaging with the council to make long-lasting contributions to U.S.-Bangladesh economic cooperation and to Shonar Bangla itself. Onek Donabad. 
Thank you so much, Marsha. Um, thank you for that uh, very sweeping and bold uh, charge to the council. We will aim very hard to live up to the expectations that you have set for us. And now it gives me uh, enormous pleasure to turn to my good friend, Sajib Wazed, uh, for his uh, remarks. And Sajib, thank you so much for being such a strong partner over the years uh, in building this U.S.-Bangladesh corridor. Over to Thank you. you very much, Nisha. Uh, Salam alaikum and a good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today. It is so good to see you. Uh, Nisha, we've worked together for so many years since uh, in promoting U.S. Bangladesh business relations, relations in general. Uh, thank you to Sid for all your hard work in helping set up this council. Ambassador Bernicad, it's so good to see you again. And Jay, it is so wonderful to see you. Uh, I remember when I was working with, I had the privilege of working with the first Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce almost a decade ago and worked closely with Jay in promoting foreign direct investment into Bangladesh. At the time, we had targeted to reach uh, an annual foreign direct investment of $10 billion. Bangladesh at the time was nowhere near that. Our foreign investment was nascent. Uh, the country was being called a failing state. And uh, in terms of uh, development, no one could have imagined where we are today. In, when our Awamali government was elected to power in 2008, we set a very ambitious agenda. One of those agendas was to achieve a middle-income country status by our 50th anniversary, which is this year. No one thought it possible, yet we have achieved it. We are very proud of that. We had also uh, set forward a very ambitious agenda of building a digital Bangladesh. It was part of our election manifesto in 2008. Again, that was one of those things that everyone thought impossible because Bangladesh was technologically so backward at the time. We have, again, proven those critics wrong. And today, Bangladesh has really taken off in terms of the IT sector. And I will limit my remarks primarily to that as the IT advisor. So what does Bangladesh offer for IT and, and technological in, uh, investment? We have, one of, we have developed a world-class IT infrastructure. Today, Bangladesh has broadband access, has fiber optic cable down to almost every single village. Uh, we are now in the phase of connecting every single village school and community healthcare clinic, which are these uh, little clinics where we have set up in almost every single village in Bangladesh, which is manned by a nurse practitioner. Uh, it is difficult to get a, work, a doctor to actually go live and work in that uh, community healthcare clinic. So what we have done is we are connecting those community healthcare clinics with broadband access so that they can consult live, real time uh, with a doctor in a city to help patients, to take care of patients in that community healthcare clinic sitting in a remote village in Bangladesh. This is the reality of digital Bangladesh. Our infrastructure is, I would say, far ahead of many of our uh, neighboring countries, and I would say second to none, uh, far ahead of perhaps many developed countries as well. Uh, what are we, uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, next steps, uh, looking to the future, um, we are now uh, focusing on uh, and, uh, rolling out 5G, which we have planned to roll out by the end of this year. Uh, our uh, IT workforce produces 60,000 uh, technical graduates every year, which are feeding into the um, uh, uh, technical sector. These, we have focused on entrepreneurship as well. So, our focus has been not just developing an IT workforce and uh, waiting for foreign companies to come in to employ them, but we have focused on uh, 
providing expertise, providing training, providing finance uh, and investment to our startups in Bangladesh. There are several programs that our ICT ministry has set up uh, directly funding some of these startups. We are investing in some of these startups in a public-private partnership. And today, Bangladesh has a rapidly growing uh, IT uh, entrepreneurship sector. You have many, many startups in Bangladesh, which are now starting to be uh, recognized worldwide. Companies such as Pathau and Bcash. Uh, Bangladesh today is the eighth largest uh, population in the world. We are the eighth largest consumer market in the world. And as you all know, for the IT uh, investment sector, your biggest uh, uh, asset is your customer base. And we have the eighth largest customer base in the world. Uh, while eight years ago, 10 years ago, no one could have imagined but today in Bangladesh, we have IT startups that are valued at up to a billion dollars. And this is just the beginning. Uh, we believe that the next IT unicorns, such as you have in China, the next WeChat, the next Alibaba, Bangla these are now coming to fruition in Bangladesh. Today, they're worth a few hundred million in the next five to 10 years, they will be worth billions of dollars. And so the opportunity for uh, venture capital in Bangladesh is, this is the time. This is the time to invest in these companies in Bangladesh because we have the manpower, we have the infrastructure, we have the know-how, we have developed the know-how. It's not just the uh, software-based and service-based industries. Uh, we are also, we have also moved up the value chain in terms of our uh, uh, technological base. So uh, the Honorable Prime Minister mentioned our high-tech parks that we have set up across the country. These are technological manufacturing hubs where you have all the facilities to set up uh, many IT high-tech manufacturing plus tax breaks and in, of course infrastructure available readily to your companies. And we have targeted several of them for uh, different uh, foreign countries for th their uh, IT companies to come and invest so that you will be working with companies that are uh, from your region that you can connect with of course, your workforce will be speaking the same language. But uh, in particular, I would like to point out some of the achievements that we've made. Uh, we are now, Bangladesh is now, we are producing printed circuit boards in Bangladesh by local Bangladeshi companies. Almost all electronics in Bangladesh that are consumed by the local market at the lower level, middle class and below, are produced in Bangladesh. It is only the uh, the wealthy that use imported equipment now, televisions, refrigerators, dishwashers, cell phones. And speaking of cell phones, we have our cell phone companies now have over 130 million subscribers and 90% of all mobile phones that are sold in Bangladesh are produced in Bangladesh, including smartphones. And I'm really proud to say that in the last year, uh, we're no longer just producing basic smartphones, but Samsung's flagship phone, the Note Galaxy Note 10, for the Bangladesh market was produced in Bangladesh. So we are no longer we are no longer second to anyone. Uh, if you want to compare to Vietnam, Philippines, uh, even China, we are starting to see now uh, and. Certain technological manufacturing starting to move from Bangladesh, uh, from China to Bangladesh. So, um, in conclusion, I would like to say that this change, the next step, is happening. Uh, while until recently the world was really relying on primarily China 
for technological outsourcing, for uh, production, mass production of uh, electronics and electronic equipment. Our goal has been to uh, try to move some of this to Bangladesh, to uh, grab some of that growth and move up and that value. And because of COVID, because of the, the renewed focus on diversification, uh, this has certainly benefited Bangladesh. Asian companies are starting to move to Bangladesh, and I would urge U.S. companies to start making that move as well, because we can offer you world-class infrastructure, supply chains, and even in terms of ease of doing business, digital Bangladesh is making all of this much easier. We are digitizing our ports. We're digitizing our tax collection, our uh, uh, duty uh, payment systems. Uh, these are going to make all of your uh, endeavors, all of your initiatives much easier. Uh, just to give you one small example, today in Bangladesh, for IT startups, for uh, 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 e-commerce companies such as Patao and Amazon, we have a, a online API-based identity verification of all citizens of Bangladesh through our national ID database. This can be done sitting anywhere immediately within seconds. We, have, we are transforming to a cashless society. Our next focus is to, be, uh, is to uh, take the re uh, remaining unbanked population and move them all online. Our goal is within the next three years that 90% of the adult population of Bangladesh will have online bank accounts, online bank access, and will be transacting uh, uh, online, uh, purchasing their goods online, shopping online, selling their wares online. So we have big ambitions. Our uh, achieving our middle income status was just a stepping stone. This is not the end goal. This is just a stepping stone towards achieving, towards becoming a developed country by the year 2040. And our Wamali government is committed to that, is committed to modernization, committed to development, committed to digitization, which enhances uh, our competitiveness, enhances uh, transparency, eliminates corruption once everything is fully digitized. And we hope that US companies will uh, come in with a stronger investment, stronger uh, footprint, and increase our bilateral trade. With that, I would like to thank uh, Nisha and her team. Uh, congratulations again, Nisha, on the launching, on the very successful launch of the US Bangladesh Business Council. I look forward to working with you in enhancing and growing our bilateral trade and investment further. Thank you all very much. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangla. Thank you so much, Sajib. And you have certainly painted a very exciting and electrifying vision of Bangladesh's future, which I know you have been so instrumental in helping to usher in. Um, and many of the exciting startups that you referenced are going to be, uh, we'll be hearing from them shortly in, a, in our program, including uh, from uh, the ShopUp CEO and then later from the Bcash uh, CEO as well. And I'm proud to say, that uh, there's increasing financing coming from the United States into Bangladesh for these exciting uh, um, startups that, uh, that you mentioned, including through uh, organizations like Anchorless uh, Bangladesh, which is really um, a US venture firm that is investing in Bangladeshi startups. So thank you to both of you for the time that you spent with us today for sharing your vision um, and uh, for the unstinting uh, support that you and, and commitment that you have had to the U.S. Bangladesh uh, corridor. And now we're going to hear from some of the corporate leaders who have also just really committed themselves uh, to this very important market and this very important relationship. And we're going to hear from uh, U.S. and Bangladeshi CEOs uh, in uh, just a 
coming up shortly. But uh, in the meantime, thank you very much. And after we hear from our CEOs, we'll have a little panel conversation uh, with a couple of our board members and with the uh, CEO of Bcash. Uh, so stay tuned, everybody, and uh, thank you again to Marsha and to Sajib and to Jay for joining us earlier. Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh, Madam Sheikh Hasina, and distinguished dignitaries, good evening. I would first and foremost like to extend my best wishes to the people of Bangladesh for Muji Borsho and congratulate the Honorable Prime Minister, the nation, and the people of Bangladesh for the monumental occasion of 50th year of independence. I'd also like to congratulate the U.S. Chamber of Commerce on the launch of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council and thank them for continuing to promote economic cooperation between the United States of America and the People's Republic of Bangladesh, and for being a true partner to Uber in Bangladesh. Bangladesh and the United States of America share a vision to create an inclusive and prosperous future. Under the leadership of the dynamic Prime Minister, Bangladesh's GDP has clocked impressive growth, making remarkable progress in creating a digital Bangladesh and Uber is proud to have been a part of this successful journey. Uber has been one of the pioneers of ride sharing in Bangladesh. In a little over four years, we've created livelihood opportunities for more than 100,000 people, enabling them to live more empowered and dignified lives. So far, we've seamlessly and conveniently transported over 7 million people to their destinations. We want to make every Bangladesh city more sustainable and more livable, and we'll continue working with all of our stakeholders to build a stronger and better Bangladesh. Thank you. Honorable Prime Minister, greetings from General Electric. On behalf of GE, I wish to congratulate you, your government, and people of Bangladesh as you celebrate the golden jubilee of your independence. U.S. industry has been a true partner in Bangladesh, and therefore we applaud the launch of U.S. Bangladesh Business Council on this occasion. General Electric is very proud of its investments and presence in Bangladesh, providing critical infrastructure and services in power, energy, healthcare and aviation. And we regard many Bangladeshi companies as our global partners. I'm personally very excited to join this U.S. Bangladesh Business Council on the board of directors. We also congratulate you for your leadership in developing and strengthening the economic and bilateral relationships between Bangladesh and US. And we really look forward to take these to the next level. General Electric is committed to pursue win-win opportunities between Bangladesh and US and bring its state-of-the-art technologies to benefit both these nations and grow jobs in both these countries. Thank you so much. To the Honourable Prime Minister and to the people of Bangladesh, I wish you warm congratulations on your golden jubilee year and the birth centenary of the father of the nation, Sheikh Mujiba Rahman. I am Judith McKenna, President and CEO of Walmart International, and we celebrate Bangladesh's ability to transform itself to become one of the world's fastest growing economies. I can tell you that we are proud to bring Bangladesh-made products to our customers around the world. At the same time, we care deeply for the women and men who make these products. We remain committed to the welfare of the people in our supply chain, and we applaud strides taken to improve worker safety and dignity. We encourage the continued focus and partnership of many stakeholders working together for change. Firstly, Thank you to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce for convening these stakeholders and launching the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. We look forward to this opportunity to partner. And again, thank you to the people of Bangladesh and congratulations on your Golden Jubilee Year. 
To Your Excellency, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina MP, and to the Government of Bangladesh and all the Bangladeshi citizens. On behalf of the entire MetLife organization, I would like to extend our deep and heartfelt congratulations on the 50th anniversary of Bangladesh's independence, as well as for the birth centennial of Bangda Bangdu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, father of the nation and father of the Honorable Prime Minister. We commend you for your tremendous social and economic progress and the ambitious development and reform agenda leading to 2041. MetLife's history is indeed intertwined with the modern history of this great nation. Shortly after Bangladesh's independence in 1971, the father of the nation personally authorized the registration of our company. Since then, MetLife has been a leader in the life insurance industry in Bangladesh. We have nearly 1.2 million policies in force, 17,000 agents, and nearly $2 billion in total investments in the country. We remain committed to Bangladesh and look forward to our continuing partnership with the government in enhancing the financial security and prosperity in the country. Today's launch of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council is a testament to the steadfast commitment by both the government of Bangladesh and the U.S. business community to bring the bilateral partnership to a new level. Once again, our deepest congratulations to Your Excellency, the government of Bangladesh, and to the Bangladeshi citizens throughout the country. Hello, I am Afif, one of the co-founders and CEO of ShopUp. 98% of our country's retail consumption happens through four and a half million small neighborhood mom and pop shops. These SMEs are at the forefront of the country's growth towards the next level of economic progress. We are building a mobile-based platform to help these SMEs grow exponentially by providing them easy access to working capital, easy access to sourcing, and easy access to logistics throughout the country. We have seen 10 times more adoption last year on our platform despite COVID compared to the year before. 2021 marks the 50 years of our independence. With deep internet penetration and accelerated digitization, we are in a position to fast track the growth of the country with tech first products and solutions. In our journey, we have been backed by many esteemed US based venture capital firms, including Flourish, Omidia Network, and Sequoia Capital. Beyond the investment, these partners have brought in deep insights, know hows, and access to global network of experts that was crucial for our growth. We believe scaling these kind of U.S. Bangladesh ties can significantly help hundreds of startups in Bangladesh and make us a true tech-first economy for many other emerging countries to follow as a role model. Thank you. Hi, I'm Simon Milner. I lead Facebook's public policy team in the Asia-Pacific region. We are excited to support the launch of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council today, and we congratulate Bangladesh on the 50th anniversary of becoming an independent country. Now, Facebook aims to connect people and build inclusive communities around the world. And I'm gonna share briefly how we aim to do that in Bangladesh on issues like COVID-19, entrepreneurship and digital citizenship. Now, since January last year and the start of this pandemic, we've connected more than 2 billion people in 189 countries with accurate information about COVID-19. Uh, and that includes in Bangladesh, where we partnered with uh, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and the World Health Organization to provide information in Bangla on our COVID information center. And this year, we're working with partners, including in Bangladesh, to ensure that everybody gets accurate information about vaccines, including how to register. Now, we also recognize that the pandemic has created real challenges in terms of mental health and well-being and that's why on world mental health day last year we partnered with several health lines run by partners in bangladesh to get them onto facebook and instagram so that people could find them when they needed help during this pandemic we've seen many businesses have to go online in order to stay connected with customers and to continue to grow uh, many of them turning to facebook and instagram uh, and this includes in bangladesh where we've particularly seen women-led businesses uh, as being part of this digital transformation. 
Now, uh, the last thing I want to mention is digital citizenship. Last year, we launched our flagship digital literacy program, We Think Digital, in Bangladesh. It's all part of our contribution to Bangladesh's digital transformation. So finally, let me uh, repeat my congratulations again for the launch of the US Bangladesh Business Council today. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is Sheikh Fazal Fahim, President, Federation of Bangladesh Chambers of Commerce and Industries. FBCCI is the exclusive umbrella trade organization representing MSMEs to the largest sector in agriculture, manufacturing, service, and quaternary sector of our economy. We have all the chambers and sectoral association of 500 members in Bangladesh and 132 global strategic partners around the world. We wish U.S. Chamber of Commerce all the best on U.S. Bangladesh Business Council initiative. We believe through this platform, greater engagements in ICT, belly chain of textile and apparel, pharmaceuticals, hardware, software, cybersecurity equipments, high-tech ventures, startup ecosystem, skills, heavy industries, and others will be explored and invested and engaged in through bilateral value chain initiative, utilizing technological and business process know-hows of United States companies and production competitive edge of Bangladesh with domestic market of 160 million, regional market access of 1.8 billion, and duty-free market, quarter-free market access to various parts of the world. We believe through U.S. Bangladesh Business Council and with our support throughout enterprises will maximize opportunities with United States companies' know-how and our production competitive edge for Bangladesh, U.S. and beyond. Thank you. God bless. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today I am very happy to see that our Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has kindly launched the long-awaited U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. I like to attach my best appreciation for the Senior Vice President of U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Ms. Nisha Bishwal, and her colleagues, and congratulate entrepreneurs of our both countries for this grand launch. Dear friends from the U.S. and Bangladesh business community, it is my great pleasure to note that this platform is an important footstep to further strengthen the U.S.-Bangladesh economic, commercial and investment relationship. And we are deeply happy to see this new platform is launched at a time when we are celebrating the birth centenary of the father of the nation. Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and the 50th year of independence. This definitely will show great results in increasing trade between our countries. You all know that UN CDP concluded its decision that Bangladesh will graduate from the least development country status in 2026 for its immense socio-economic development and we are very proud that we shall no longer be an LDC. At this point, I cordially look forward to enhanced collaboration with our partners like the United States to sustain the recent growth trajectory in areas of trade and investment. Dear friends, COVID-19 pandemic posed some challenges for us that we need to face together. In our journey of five decades, U.S. has been a trusted friend and have shown noble gestures at our trying times. Also now, at this crossroad, we passionately looking forward to the U.S. entrepreneurs to exploit the investment opportunities in the light engineering, jute, leather and ICT sectors for export through this newly formed platform. I, on behalf of the Bangladesh government, can assure you that the best possible efforts and policy to further ease the doing business and investment environment along with improving infrastructure to make sure we become globally and regionally
competitive. We know private sector partnership and innovation will be the key to our further growth. And we welcome American innovation, cooperation, policy discussion and investment to take our partnership to the next level. I once again congratulate the US Chamber of Commerce for launching this US Bangladesh Council and I look forward to working with you in future. My sincere gratitude to you all to grace today's launching ceremony. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabandhu. Aid agencies are struggling to get help to millions of people affected by devastating floods across South Asia. It's thought to be the worst monsoon. Thousands of troops have already been pressed into action. The more of the aid towards the south is extremely frightening um, because we have no warning. One of the most important variables during a crisis is reliable information. There's so much work that's already been done by governments, by the UN and NGOs, and we're trying to learn from that work, build on that, and assist them with their goals. To be able to provide a forecast in real time, we rely on the government we're working with. We complement their effort by adding accurate modeling to that process. We start by collecting thousands of satellite images to build a digital model of the terrain. Based on these maps, we generate hundreds of thousands of simulations of how the river could possibly behave we receive the measurements from the government and cross those measurements with our simulations. We can then send those forecasts to individuals using search, maps, and add notifications. This is an example of an alert that we can produce. This alert is actually has over 90% accuracy. We are in very exciting time to use technology to try to make a difference. I can't imagine a greater privilege than to do what we love and do it in a way that could actually help people directly in a very profound way. Our hope for the future is to give people a few more days of warning before a flood occurs and to use AI to scale this and provide these forecasts anywhere in the world, wherever people need them. Well, what, what an inspiring story, um, really, to see how technology, and particularly how uh, American technology, is really helping to create transformation. We've heard from some of our corporate leaders in the U.S. and Bangladesh about how the U.S.-Bangladesh corridor is growing in importance for both countries. And from energy to e-commerce, from technology to transportation, we're seeing a surge in trade and investment between our two countries. Now we are privileged to have with us three business leaders from the United States and Bangladesh with deep experience in the U.S.-Bangladesh corridor. Uh, let me bring on to the screen Stephen Kobos, President and CEO of Accelerate Energy and a board member of the U.S.-Bangladesh Business Council. Um, Accelerate Energy is operating the world's first fully integrated turnkey, turnkey floating LNG terminal and Bangladesh's first LNG LNG import terminal. Um, Elena Butarova, Senior Vice President uh, for Strategic Growth Markets in Asia for MetLife, again, another member of the US Bangladesh Business Council Board. Uh, MetLife has been operating in Bangladesh since 1952 and is the largest life insurance, insurance company across the country. And then I'm very privileged to also welcome uh, to the program Kamal Kadir, the founder and CEO of Bcash, which we heard uh, 
um, earlier uh, spoken about by Sajib Wazed. Uh, Bcash represents Bangladesh's largest mobile financial services company and has had a unique relationship uh, with the backing from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as investment from many uh, um, venture capital firms that has allowed it to really be one of the fastest growing um, startups in Bangladesh. Let me start off with a question uh, for you, Stephen. As one of the most uh, prominent pursuits of Bangladesh has been to become energy secure and energy resilient um, and accelerates floating LNG terminal has been a key component of that. Um, talk to us uh, how, for a company like Celerate, why is the U.S.-Bangladesh strategic relationship important to the energy sector and to your work? Thank you, Nisha. Um, first, thanks for inviting me to participate in this. I didn't think I could be any more excited about making foreign direct investment in Bangladesh than I already was, but uh, I'm kind of fired up listening to everybody talk on this program. It's very it's incredibly exciting and it's an amazing opportunity. Uh, first though, let me echo the people, uh, the leaders we've already heard say and congratulate Bangladesh on 50 years of independence and the milestone uh, for the council of setting up this business council. To me, uh, as a US energy company, uh, it's important that I know that our governments of the United States and Bangladesh share a vision for an inclusive, secure, and prosperous future. Um, we know from Secretary of State Blinken's recent call with Foreign Minister Momin that in addition to deepening economic cooperation, our countries are working together to address all kinds of issues like climate change, global terrorism, and the regional refugee crisis. Uh, to us, a strong U.S.-Bangladesh strategic relationship lays the groundwork for U.S. companies like Accelerate to do business in a country that clearly respects the rule of law, is open to private investment, and provides regulatory certainty. That's all part of what fuels uh, the interest in Accelerate making further investment in Bangladesh. So really, my message is for all of the other US energy companies, uh, whether you're looking to participate in offshore exploration, develop import infrastructure, or connect consumers to reliable electricity. Uh, we all must do our part to engage local counterparties, government entities, and communities. Uh, Accelerate is proud of its leading role in bringing security, resilience, and flexibility to Bangladesh's energy system through our two LNG floating terminals. And as I said, we stand ready to continue our partnership with Bangladesh in reaching energy goals. You know, together, we can combat climate change by replacing carbon intensive fuel sources like coal with cleaner LNG. We can increase energy access through focusing on last mile connect connectivity, and we can support economic growth by providing reliable power to industrial users. So as I mentioned at the outset, to me, the strength of the U.S.-Bangladesh strategic relationship allows us to invest in Bangladesh with confidence. And I would uh, like to thank the officials of both governments who work so hard to keep this bilateral relationship moving forward. It's incredibly important to all of us. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much, Stephen, and uh, certainly for the ambitious growth plans that Bangladesh has, uh, energy security is certainly a key and foundational element. Um, I want to turn next to Elena. Um, you know, absolutely impressive long history in Bangladesh for MetLife as one of the earliest American companies to invest there. And you've had um, really unparalleled growth in the Bangladesh market, particularly, uh, you know, over, over the past four or five years. You know, talk to us a little bit about what has been the, the secret to the sauce for MetLife, the, the success that you've seen in Bangladesh and the significant contributions that um, you're making to, the, to this uh, high growth economy. So Elena, thank you for joining us and over to you. 
Thank you very much uh, for the invitation and the ability to, to talk to such prominent audience. So for me, it's a perfect opportunity to congratulate so Bangladesh for uh, the great, great anniversary. And also, I'm so happy to be the part of U.S. Bangladesh, uh, US -Bangladesh um, Business Council. So as for your question, so through, through our history, we have seen a tremendous social and economical uh, progress across Bangladesh. So this is um, uh, in large part uh, due to the strategic vision of uh, the Honorable uh, Sheikh Hasina and the government. So no doubts about it. And their drive to keep Bangladesh on the development path. And the Digital Bangladesh Plan is one example of the strategic vision. And the inclusive approach they have taken ensures um, the broad-based broad and sustainable uh, gains as well. And the government moves to integrate more closely with the international economy and community have sent, uh, certainly contributed to the strong results uh, you mentioned. For our part, so MetLife American Life Insurance Company, Alico, started doing business in Bangladesh in uh, 1952. And uh, we have grown the country together. And by bringing international expertise and also cultiva cultivating local talents. And I'm personally, I'm, uh, I'm a very big fan of that because we have to give the ability and opportunity you know, to, the, to, the, to the people to grow and uh, realize their, their talents. So we, we grown to be uh, the leading insurer in the market. In addition uh, to developing human capital, so we also invest the financial capital. So we hold on behalf of our policyholders in the country. That means that we are one of the single largest in, in investors in the government, uh, governmental bonds, which also gives uh, a good opportunity for the country finance. And so the strength of business provides the financial security to the households. We are one of the country largest taxpayer. And uh, for us, it's extremely important to follow our purpose, always with you, building a more confident future. So for us, it's also very important to support the governmental financial viability. And however, so we still need to do a lot to, in order to obtain a vision uh, 2041. So in our sector, in insurance, so Bangladesh life insurance penetration stands at only 0.5%, which of course fell behind the average of 3.3 for emerging markets. So it's way to grow. This means most Bangladeshis uh, are living uh, uninsured and uh, this lack of financial protection will hinder consumer and investor confidence. This situation warrants the industry in partnership with the government to take active steps, really active steps to close the gap and help people access to protection they need and thereby increase confidence of their economic futures. And the government focus on inclusion and focus to open new channels such as bank assurance will certainly help uh, to address this gap and we commend uh, to the government on uh, continuously driving positive reforms. Thank you. Thank you, Elena. Um, certainly, I think as you look at the human capital and the, and the potential for growth, it's, uh, it's really uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, I want to turn to Kamal. Um, thank you for joining us, Kamal. And we've heard throughout this program from uh, Sajib Wazed, from uh, Minister Munshi, about the uh, really exciting things that are happening in Bangladesh in the startup ecosystem, the ways in which uh, new and innovative companies are coming up, companies like the one that you have founded, uh, Bcash, and, and the important role in therefore uh, being able to provide um, digital uh, financial services to the, to the population. Um, talk to us a little bit about the Bcash story and also about what is enabling Bangladeshi startups to really uh, grow um, and sustain such incredible velocity and momentum um, in your own growth trajectory. Over to you, Kamal. Thank you, Nisha. Thank you for inviting me. And it was quite encouraging to see our uh, Honorable Prime Minister speaking today. And it was extremely humbling uh, to see the Honorable IT Advisor uh, mentioning about Bikash and 
him recognizing our 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 small effort in in the financial inclusion space. Um, I would say the the government's uh, inclusive vision is paramount in in the kind of work we are all into. Um, and if you look at the based on that inclusivity, the use of technology that government uh, envisioned and the political vision of, of digital Bangladesh, it somewhat galvanized uh, all the forces that was required for uh, technology related services to come in. So that brought uh, investor, regulator, policymaker, entrepreneurs, all were focused uh, in terms of how do you create use cases of, of digital Bangladesh. So if you look at, uh, in the case of Bikash, um, the regulation was very critical, okay, because we provide a regulated service and, and central bank got the right direction from the political leadership that what kind of regulation they would like to see. And subsequently, we also designed the services in a way that, that can meet the objective. So I'll give an example, say um, in most countries, uh, this kind of service usually start with smartphone. And in our case, we, we used very basic phones. So even the cheapest handset, like $10 handset was used to access financial service. So if you would have gone for the, the smartphone, then it would be only meeting the need of a, of a affluent class. I'm talking about 10 years ago. So today, yes, the affluent class are also using these kind of services. And of course, the financially constrained group are also using. So combination of these things has really focused us into, into uh, basically capitalizing the resources we have. And if you, if you look at Bangladesh, it's a, um, it's a country of 170 million people. There are more mobile phones in the country today than, than the number of people. So as a result, a young person and a young entrepreneur is thinking, I have this tremendously powerful tool. How do I capitalize this thing? I mean, each mobile phone, uh, we know that has more processing power, even the cheapest one has more processing power than what uh, NASA used in 1969 to, to send man to moon. So now, now when 170 million people, particularly the young people have access to those kind of device in their hands, they are capitalizing this thing. And they are seeing through internet uh, what is happening in other countries, uh, how they can replicate this thing. Open source is allowing people to uh, replicate technology very fast. So what is happening in, in, in San Francisco uh, can be implemented in Bangladesh instantly. So these, these kind of forces as, as, as initiated by a very clear vision that we have to be a, a digital country has really encouraged uh, a lot of young people. And, and nowadays, if you, if you do have the right resource, uh, fund is there. The whole world has 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 plenty of uh, resources. So if we can, uh, if we can do our um, uh, processes correctly, if we can follow the regulation properly, uh, then fund will come. And I think uh, young Bangladeshis are increasingly taking advantage of that. Well, that's fantastic, and I know it's just an incredibly dynamic, uh, dynamic ecosystem in Bangladesh in terms of uh, the young talent, uh, the innovation, and the energy and enthusiasm that you see in that workforce. Uh, something that I know uh, is very much prized and appreciated by um, foreign investors as well as uh, by the uh, Bangladeshi uh, businesses that are coming in. Um, I know we are. Um, short on time this morning with all of the incredible um, speakers that we've had uh, over, over the span, but I'm going to end with just a one um, rapid fire question for that I'm going to ask uh, each of you to answer. Um, as we look to the coming decades and the uh, in, you know, aspirations of the Bangladeshi people, of the Bangladeshi government, what um, makes you the most bullish uh, about Bangladesh? W give me one or two qualities uh, um, that you find in the country that brings you to Bangladesh and that you would uh, encourage other uh, businesses that are looking to invest there to be, uh, th to be thinking about. Um, Stephen, why don't we start with you? You need to unmute, Stephen. You're not the first one to tell me that this year, Nisha. <laughs> For me, it's easy. It's the it's the human element. It's the the incredible talent that we find within Bangladesh. You know, we continue to expand our workforce in Bangladesh. 
Uh, we are running it with Bangladesh nationals, just incredible human talent that you find in Bangladesh. We'll be supporting other regions out of our uh, Bangladesh offices, and we're going to add a third office in Kulna this year. And secondly, uh, what I touched on before, uh, just the strength of the government, the adherence to rule of law, the certainty, the way you feel comfortable making foreign investment in this country. I, I cannot be more bullish for the other council members and in making investment in Bangladesh and hiring Bangladesh talent. Uh, thank you. Elena, um, as I said, MetLife is not a newcomer to Bangladesh. They've been here for uh, nearly 70 years. Um, what can you tell us about that uh, um, need for patience and, and persistence and perseverance versus the um, fast moving and low hanging fruits uh, that investors are often looking for? Look, uh, I think we have great opportunity here and this opportunity just growing year over year. And we have a uh, you know, robust and sustaining for, for workforce for more than 17,000 agents. So and we are being uh, the largest insurer in Bangladesh. Although, as, you, uh, as, as I mentioned, the penetration is very low. So for us, the, you know, it's uh, critically important to constantly working to adapt and meet the customer needs. For example, so the pandemic. Pandemic is a very bad thing, but at the same time, so it hosted a lot of new challenges and gave us uh, new opportunities. What, uh, let, me, uh, let me give you an example. On a pandemic, uh, as the pandemic set in, we saw our customers faced uh, new uncertainties uh, about the severe virus. Uh, so we developed an app-based tool, Sachi Achi you know, to provide unique health and financial support for our, our policyholder, including 24-7 online doctor consultation for free, for free. And I think it was very important. And also for workforce development. So creating jobs is important, but uh, the most important is to, to, to create qualified jobs, qualified jobs, very well trained, educated. And one of the topics which I would like to raise as well so we, we, we need to, you know, to, to, we, and we apply our expertise, expertise to, to build a pool of trained actuaries in the country. This is a big, big issue in Bangladesh. And actuaries are, are quite scarce in Bangladesh. And uh, these professionals are critical for, uh, you know, insurance development and enhancing a real financial security. And we, are, we have been partnering with the government, international actuaries, uh, societies, and various universities in Bangladesh to promote actual, actuarial studies and sponsor scholar, scholarships and uh, on, the, on, the, on the job skill training. And one more thing where we are really uh, aligned with many, many speakers and participants of this event is the digital economy. Here, so it, it, it's it, developing digital tools, not only for just, you know, uh, communication with their customers, but also to provide, uh, you know, an easy access. For example, we, we use digital recruitment to attract new talents to join our company very successfully, really very successfully. And one more thing, digital payments. This is a big uh, challenge in Bangladesh as well. And having monthly payments with more than 1 million customers, it's a big challenge for us as well. And what we did, and we did it together with our great partner, Bcash. So we, we allowed the digital payments uh, for, for, for our customers. And in addition to the convenience uh, of the customer, it gives to the country and the government also digital transparency, which is extremely important. And we have also the internal commitment to grow a cashless transactions for our business. And uh, the, the big goal is in five years to, to do it cashless. And I think it creates also additional opportunity for financial inclusion. And uh, this, uh, this uh, is also very important, uh, not only for all customers, but specifically for, for women, for female. And we are as a company, we are proud to be like uh, for 22 consecutive years, we are a working mother uh, best company. So uh, in, in, in US, and we are working really to, for inclusion and uh, in, in Bangladesh as well. There are a lot of things to do, 
So it's important uh, effort. And uh, so the MetLife Foundation, for example, in partnership with Asian University for Women, as um, we, we have created in 2016, one year um, uh, university preparatory program for female students to receive intensive uh, instructions in English, math, and computer skills. So we are pleased with these efforts, never enough. And Bangladesh gives us a new drive new opportunity every now and then. And I'm very, very happy to, to, to work in this uh, great, great country. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. And I'm gonna give the last, uh, last question over to you, Kamal. And if you could just talk a little bit about the fact that, um, you know, we want to see more uh, U.S. FDI going into Bangladesh. I think right now Bangladesh gets about 1% of its GDP growth um, from FDI investment. And I think there's enormous uh, potential for growth there, particularly when we look at enterprises like Bcash that are just uh, growing phenomenally and so successfully. Can you talk to us about uh, a few words to uh, um investors that might be out there listening about the opportunity that Bangladesh represents? So, Nisha, thank you again. Um, well, I'll make two points. Uh, one is that when, you know, some success of uh, mobile financial service demonstrates that when the policy is done correctly, the, the right results can be achieved. And a lot of those good policies are taking place in Bangladesh. In payment space itself, I mean, interoperability is coming and many new initiatives are coming. So if you, if I, I'll give one example here. So um, there's a very strong uh, digital network in the country uh, and there is a effective payment solution. If there is a FedEx is created in the country, I mean, FedEx is alternative, e-commerce will boom tremendously. So that's just one example I'm giving that to, to build the third level, the first level was achieved by mobile network. Second level was payment was achieved. Uh, now, if we, if we, if the logistic is built, then uh, e-commerce will take a different, different shape. And then the second point I want to make is that, see, at a very basic level, um, some, um, fertile land, water, uh, people. Bangladesh is blessed with some of the most essential ingredients for human prosperity. And with that, when 12 years of uh, stability was, was added, the country grew tremendously in the last 12 to 13 years. So that, that, it, that shows that now with 170 million people who are, who are networked, who, are, who have the smart device in their hand. I mean, I mean, I mean brain power is very democratically distributed. Okay. So, so this brain power, if we can be used, if we can use that, then Bangladesh can generate tremendous uh, progress in the next 10, 15, 20 years. And, and the last point I want to make that one thing we have achieved as a nation, that things are far more predictable now. Okay. Um, that, you know, in the past, Maybe some when some liberal magazine would we used to say that Bangladesh is the next uh, tiger economy. Uh, we used to get very happy, but I think now it is not a uh, it's, it's not the editor's liberalism anymore. It's a, it's a very predictable uh, number, uh, and and if something is not working, something else is working. I mean, I'll conclude with one simple thing. Um, in in 2005, when I when I graduated from. Um, uh, um, um, graduate school. I recall the China's GDP was around was uh, around two thousand dollar. Okay, which is today's Bangladesh's GDP. Okay, or Bangladesh is probably a little higher. So we are roughly um, um, 12, 12 years behind. But but with the right device and right policy, this this gap can be can be minimized faster. Well, fantastic. I think we, we got some really important points from each of you about the human capital, the political vision, and the policy stability and the policy uh, transparency that has really allowed um, for the economy to grow. And um, looking forward to hearing uh, from our, our final set of speakers, including from the principal secretary to the prime minister, uh, who really does play a critically important role in in ushering in that policy uh, stability. And then from our uh, ambassadors of the United States to Bangladesh and of Bangladesh to the United States, uh, those will be our, our final and closing uh, conversations um, for today's launch event. But uh, really excited to uh, work with all of you as we move to uh, the future of US-Bangladesh ties. And thank you for joining us uh, for this launch program today. Thank you, Nisha.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's all. Uh, excellences, distinguished uh, entrepreneurs, dear colleagues, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to uh, thank uh, our dear friend uh, Nisha Biswal for her great steering of the drive today's uh, discussion, which was very insightful as well as uh, conclusive for entrepreneurs of both our countries. Uh, and I'm really delighted uh, to see that uh, this uh, business council, U.S. Bangladesh Business Council, is launched by our visionary leader, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina. And uh, it is happening in a year which is kind of uh, very auspicious and historic uh, for Bangladesh because we are in the uh, mode of twin celebration, uh, observing the birth century of the father of the nation and as well as the golden jubilee of our independence. And again, uh, this is remarkable that uh, this council is launched or inaugurated by the uh, daughter of the father of the nation, uh, which is uh, again making a history. And uh, I would like to convey my best to uh, Nishta and her team in the US Chamber of Commerce for uh, making this launching event a huge success, I believe. And I'm sure this platform will benefit our uh, countries, our entrepreneurs, and most importantly, our citizens. Uh, we are meeting in a, a, at a, a troubled time with uncertainty that we have not witnessed probably in our living memory. The challenges that the current situation has uh, um, thrown at us uh, felt all over the world. We express our deep interest to work together uh, in fighting uh, uh, this pandemic. Uh, we may be aware that our economy is now uh, being considered as the fastest growing uh, in this region uh, due to successful implementation of recent reform agendas. Uh, agenda uh, under the able leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina and uh, you know, we have been find uh, we uh, the uh, UN have uh, has uh, recom recommended for the LDC uh, uh, graduation from LDC to uh, developing country. Uh, that means uh, we need to work on the uh, you know duty free access or you know more uh, conducive atmosphere uh, for the uh, entrepreneurs of both the nations so that they can participate very easily. That is why I would also encourage the BTV collaboration to take forward our development initiative. Uh, I wish the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council will take the advantage to be engaged with the Federation of the uh, Federation of Bangladesh Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, for to further strengthen the U.S. Bangladesh trade relationship. Uh, I hope the subsequent discussions of our ambassador to the USA, uh, Mr. M. Shahidul Islam and U.S. Ambassador to Bangladesh, Mr. Uh, Arl Miller, uh, with the moderation of the Ambassador Demetrius Maranchis, uh, will convey more promising words uh, to the entrepreneurs and uh, help taking our relation to a new height. Uh, I would like to mention one thing. Uh, this is a historic, I think, uh, uh, very important to everybody to know. Uh, Hollis Chenery, he was uh, Chief Economist of World Bank in 1972. He was a Harvard and uh, uh, Stanford graduate. Uh, he was a very renowned development economist. So he visited Bangladesh in 1972 and made a remark or prediction that this country would take at least 120 years to uh, reach to uh, GDP, uh, $1,000 GDP per capita. Uh, in 50 years, we have been able to reach or cross 2,000. So Bangladesh is a big surprise, and I think uh, now uh, we should be proud. And this strength can be basically uh, taken forward uh, with a lot of uh, you know uh, 
initiatives that you have heard from our Honorable Prime Minister as well as uh, Honorable ICT Advisor and also our uh, Honorable Advisor to the Prime Minister on uh, private investment. So um, we are uh, looking forward to uh, have a, a more cooperation, to uh, establish more cooperation uh, among the, between these two government as well as among the business community of the countries. Our journey of five decades, uh, 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 U.S. has been the trusted friend as well as uh, have shown novel gestures of our, at our trying times. I have confidence that uh, you will profoundly uh, personally inquire into our case and scale up the trade between the two countries. Uh, thank you very much. And I look forward to, uh, as we said before, this is the beginning. Uh, so <clears throat> we look forward to have more uh, exciting conversation as well as more exciting ventures among uh, the business communities of both the countries. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Hello, everyone. My name is Demetrius Morantis, and I'm the head of global government engagement at Visa. I'm so honored to participate in the launch of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council with Ambassadors Miller and Ambassadors Islam. The launch of the Business Council is particularly timely today, following the 50th anniversary of Bangladesh's independence. Bangladesh stands tall as a model of economic transformation that Sheikh Mujib could only have dreamed of 50 years ago. We commend the government of Bangladesh, including, of course, the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina for taking bold initiatives to implement her father's vision, particularly through successes in critical areas such as education, women's economic empowerment, digitization. Bangladesh has made the world stand up and take notice. The global business community has certainly taken notice. Today, you heard from many U.S. companies who are longstanding investors in Bangladesh and are doing even more now than ever before. We at Visa, for example, have opened a new office in Dhaka to further advance our partnership with the Bangladeshi government and the business community, including the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises that are the lifeblood of Bangladesh's economy. While Bangladesh's expected graduation out of least developed country status in 2026 is an important metric, it is actually the reaction of global business that really speaks volumes about the confidence we all have in Bangladesh's long-term trajectory. And we are so fortunate that today we have two of the strongest voices representing the US-Bangladesh partnership to talk to us about this trajectory and how business can move forward Ambassadors Islam, Ambassador Miller, you don't need any introduction, but we're so <laughs> grateful and, and thankful for joining us on this momentous occasion. So I'm just going to launch into some questions, and we'd love to hear uh, both of you or your uh, responses. So let me start out just very generally with um, a discussion of bilateral cooperation. So in the face of the pandemic and the economic damage that it has posed to the most vulnerable populations and businesses in both of our countries, the United States and Bangladesh found ways to coordinate responses in the area of medical equipment and personal protective gear, while continuing to advance bilateral cooperation on economic issues. We'd love to hear, Ambassadors, what that cooperation will look like this year as we start to roll out vaccines and as we see resurging economic engagement. We'd love to hear what lessons we've learned uh, and just kind of what you see going forward in the next year. So, Ambassador Islam, why don't you start and then we can turn it over to Ambassador Miller. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has put uh, enormous strain on the economies and uh, health uh, systems uh, in uh, both our countries. Uh, the good news is that uh, we could uh, bilaterally uh, work together to produce some good results. Uh, uh, even during this trying time, uh, Bangladesh supplying uh, 6.5 million PPEs to the USA and the USA is supplying uh, 
uh, a good number of uh, ventilators to Bangladeshi hospitals, a uh, good example of such cooperation. And uh, I believe that both Bangladesh and uh, the U.S. they need to remain engaged uh, uh, during the post-COVID uh, uh, scenario, how the world economy unfolds, uh, and how Bangladesh and the USA can collaborate uh, for the benefit of uh, their peoples. Uh, for example, Bangladesh has uh, attained certain uh, level of competence in producing me medical equipment and will be prepared to uh, supply uh, the USA with uh, uh, such equipment, including syringes, uh, uh, which may uh, be the, the in demand in the US. Uh, last year, we had a uh, uh, economic partnership uh, dialogue between the two countries, and uh, we agreed to form uh, an, uh, a joint public health uh, expert group to collaborate in medical education, uh, capacity building, and the primary health care uh, area. So, and uh, in, in less than six months, we are going to launch uh, this uh, US Bangladesh. Uh, 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 business Council, uh, uh, thanks to the instrumental role played by Vice President Nisha Biswal, which is also going to really boost our uh, economic cooperation. As we agreed to further intensify our cooperation, uh, we should uh, look for some win win uh, formula for our private sectors. Uh, Bangladesh welcomes. Uh, American investment in uh, uh, promoting uh, uh, sectors uh, in promising uh, sectors like uh, ICT, pharmaceuticals, agro processing, uh, shipbuilding, and the blue economy, uh, which could uh, bring uh, benefit uh, for the two sides, uh, the private sectors of two sides. So the lesson that we have learned. Uh, from uh, this uh, pandemic and our collaboration with the pandemic is that economic cooperation uh, among our private sector businessmen is the best way to contribute uh, to the shared uh, prosperity of our people. Uh, for, for example, if our uh, garment workers uh, uh, are happy, then uh, they can produce uh, at the lower uh, price the commodities that are consumed by uh, the, the, uh, the consumers of the USA. Uh, so I, I, I think it is very important that we maintain this collaboration among the private sector businessmen. Ambassador, thank you. Ambassador Miller, turning it over to you. Well, thank you. I mean, what a great time to be the United States ambassador in Bangladesh as this remarkable country celebrates its 50th anniversary of independence. You know, our two great nations began to develop our strong partnership almost immediately after Bangladesh achieved independence. And it's based on our shared respect for self-determination and democracy. And as you noted, the United States benefited quite early in the pandemic from this partnership, when Bangladesh was among the first countries in the world to help fill an urgent demand for personal protective equipment when breaks in the supply chain left us in real need. So as we look forward to economic recovery, I'm confident that that cooperation and partnership will broaden and deepen. As it did nearly everywhere, our bilateral trade took a hit uh, in 2020. But I'm seeing recovery underway here, and I expect to return to the extraordinary growth we witnessed uh, in the, the last decade. The United States is, of course, committed to strengthening that partnership with Bangladesh to do all we can to improve trade conditions. Our security cooperation in the Bay of Bengal uh, remains open to global trade. U.S. companies, with the support of the U.S. government, will work with Bangladesh to improve its trade infrastructure including waterways, railways, and ports. U.S. energy companies will bring technology and expertise to Bangladesh to generate the power needed for its industrial growth. And the United States will continue to be a steadfast partner with Bangladesh in responding to climate change. I mean, Bangladesh is kind of uh, ground zero for climate change issues, issues that we're all going to be uh, facing, if, if not now, certainly in the future. And we're 
are going to redouble our efforts to assist in the critical effort to strengthen the resilience of the Bangladesh people in terms of food security and protection from natural disasters. So while last year turned many of our assumptions on their heads, it did remind us of the value of partnerships in meeting the unexpected, like climate change, the COVID-19 pandemic reminded us how truly interdependent we all are on this vulnerable world that we're responsible and privileged to protect. So despite what may seem an overwhelming crisis, we've showed that we can work through it together and we can weather the challenge. And we're certainly doing that in partnership here in Bangladesh. Thank you, Ambassador Miller. I'd love to drill down a little bit onto the trade and investment piece here. Um, just given the launch of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council, it's really just a testament and symbolic of the confidence that the U.S. business community has in the trade and commercial space um, in this relationship. Um, we really are very excited about the economic pillar. And we're really excited about ways that we can work together to strengthen trade and investment ties between our two countries. And as we think about that, what are areas that, that you both think we should focus on? Where are places that we can rely on each other? And where are areas that may need some continued nurturing uh, to develop the relationship even further? Ambassador Miller, why don't we start this one with you? Sure. Uh, what, uh, a great question. I, once we get through this pandemic, I, I really encourage people, if, if we get the chance and we can do it safely and prudently, to come and visit Bangladesh and just feel the entrepreneurial energy in, in this country of upwards of, a, of 170 million. Um, I think that Bangladesh and the United States share this energy and value of hard work and entrepreneurial spirit and the economic pillar of our relationship uh, has been robust and will continue to, to uh, be so in the future. And the U.S. has long viewed our business relationship as an excellent way to amplify our development efforts. And the United States has provided over the last five decades uh, over $8 billion in assistance to Bangladesh to help it on this remarkable uh, journey we celebrate uh, here. And for this reason, nearly three quarters of the assistance offered Bangladesh by USAID has a private sector engagement uh, component. Through USAID, for example, we are supporting social enterprises to provide health services for generations to come. In agriculture, we are assisting with public infrastructure necessary to expand ag trade and through USDA, studying ways to contribute to developing much needed cold chain systems. And our humanitarian assistance helps bring people into the market economy through skills, training, and expanding microfinance. Uh, you know, forming the US Bangladesh Business Council is really concrete and tangible evidence of the deep interest by U.S. companies in Bangladesh. I think it's going to inspire a, a lot of increasing trade and, and interest between both our countries. And the interest is accelerating as the country's young and able workforce and growing middle class create more demands for high quality U.S. products and services. And conversely, Bangladesh is well positioned to expand beyond its export of garments to the United States with an increasing array of goods. I mean, it's no secret that there are also challenges here. I would personally like to see the government of Bangladesh be more amenable to rolling out the red, the, uh, the red carpet as opposed to the red tape at times. But that's why the U.S. Embassy is here to help businesses navigate their, their way through some of the bureaucratic challenges. There are barriers to trade and investment. There are insufficient labor rights protections and labor safety issues pose a challenge to U.S. investors. And that can inhibit the growth of foreign investment in Bangladesh. There's sometimes a lack of transparency in some government transactions. And these topics form a major part of our agenda and our discussions when we have bilateral economic forums and in my day-to-day -day interactions with uh, Bangladesh policy and decision makers. But I find the government of Bangladesh senior officials uh, accessible and willing to listen to our concerns. But we need to continue to push to see improvement in creating a welcoming, sustainable, 
and fair business environment and level playing field for our U.S. business community. Thank you, Ambassador Miller. One area, Ambassador Islam, which we'd love to hear your, your views on, which has been a real success um, in Bangladesh, is, is um, the promise of digital Bangladesh. It's an area that's really expanded internet connectivity. It's created new opportunities for freelancers. You mentioned ICT earlier um, in your remarks. It's been a real success of this prime minister's, um, of this government. And I'd love to hear how support and success for digitization of Bangladesh's economy can also help to enhance collaboration between our two economies. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, in fact, uh, digital uh, Bangladesh uh, is an integral uh, part of uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's vision uh, 2021 uh, to transform Bangladesh into a middle income country. Uh, you have rightly said that the government uh, uh, finds it uh, to be a very critical area where the government has put enormous emphasis. Uh, uh, to bring in economic prosperity and uh, development uh, to its people. Uh, the participation of uh, Honorable Prime Minister's ICT advisor today uh, in this program uh, is uh, a testimony to the fact that we really want uh, to have an robust collaboration uh, between Bangladesh and the USA uh, in this particular sector. Uh, today, Bangladesh exports uh, more than $1 billion worth uh, ICT products uh, the USA being uh, the top uh, recipient of uh, this, uh, according to the USAID's uh, comprehensive uh, private sector assessment 2019, um, Bangladesh uh, uh, is expected to uh, grow. This uh, ICT sector is uh, expected to grow nearly fivefold to around $5 billion by 2025. The pandemic uh, promoted a digital uh, revolution and we have uh, experienced increased demand for IT products uh, uh, with virtual business models. Uh, the outsourcing sector is also going to rebound after this pandemic uh, and uh, uh, digitalization of uh, various sectors including uh, education and uh, medical services is another area where the USA can participate uh, very strongly. Uh, Bangladesh is now developing 28 high-tech parks um, uh, for ICT industries with local and foreign uh, investment, with a young uh, uh, population uh, uh, skilled in technology. Uh, Bangladesh could uh, become an important hotspot for ICT investment in the region. Uh, in fact, we uh, do look upon US companies uh, to work with Bangladeshi counterparts to develop and use the huge uh, human resources uh, uh, pool that uh, is available in Bangladesh in ITC, IT, ICT sector. Um, and also US entrepreneurs can establish uh, a, a, a designated uh, economic zone uh, for this purpose. We are prepared to give them uh, the land and all facilities. Thank you, Ambassador Islam. Uh, you know, digital digital Bangladesh and, and, and so much of the ICT growth has really um, propelled so much interest in Bangladesh. Visa has been there for over a decade, um, and we are really doubling down on, on our investment in, in Bangladesh right now um, for that reason. Um, you know, there, there are so many of us uh, here today who are interested in, in, um, in this economy and in real growing this relationship. I'd love to hear from both of you, what, what message do you have for us? What messages do you have for the business communities in, in both the US um, and in Bangladesh as we think about continuing Bangladesh's overall success story and as we think about how to increase the trade and investment relationship between our two countries? Ambassador Miller, why don't you take that first and then we'll turn to Ambassador Islam. Sure. Well, it's pretty obvious that I'm, I'm very bullish on on Bangladesh, and I really encourage uh, people to to look at at this country, which has flown beneath the radar for a long time, despite despite its remarkable um, growth, particularly in, in the in the last decade. I mean, as is true 
everywhere, um, U.S. businesses considering um, entering the Bangladesh market are, will face some unknowns and some challenges. I can assure uh, you all of one thing, competition will be fierce. More and more uh, businesses and countries are recognizing the potential and opportunities here in this uh, country again of upwards of 170 uh, consumers with this uh, rich and uh, energetic uh, entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, companies coming to Bangladesh need to establish working relationships and lines of communication with local partners, as, as you do everywhere in the world, to help navigate uh, unfamiliar rules and norms. Um, doing business here uh, means never taking your position for granted because of the, uh, because of the competition. But the door is open for, for U.S. businesses, and you will be warmly welcomed. U.S. companies considering Bangladesh for the first time should know that they're building on the reputation of the companies that preceded them. Our Bangladeshi partners do appreciate high quality American products and uh, our cutting edge state of the art uh, products that uh, provide so many positive contributions uh, to the Bangladeshi people. U.S. companies have brought the best and most uh, innovative technologies to this country and they, they stand out for their commitment to their customers through the life cycle of, of, their, of their products. U.S. companies employ and train thousands of Bangladeshi workers to the highest international standards and provide corporate social responsibility programs and this reputation is what makes American companies so unique, so valued and so welcome here. Thank you, Ambassador. Ambassador Islam, what do you think? Well, um, I, I would uh, say that uh, Bangladesh's economy and society have gone, uh, undergone uh, uh, enormous uh, changes uh, during the past one uh, decade and the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Uh, today, Bangladesh is a major trading partner um, of many countries, a uh, manufacturing hub in South Asia and a large market of 160 million uh, people with uh, butchering middle class. Uh, and uh, Bangladesh's sustainable economic growth, uh, its uh, convenient uh, geographical location, uh, then uh, the connectivity that it is uh, enhancing with its neighboring countries, uh, uh, mm -hmm. make a, a good destination uh, for the American companies to do business and investment. Uh, we have a large uh, domestic market, uh, which is uh, important and increasingly we are having a more uh, purchasing power uh, in our population, which can be attractive to the American uh, uh, businessmen. Uh, they can uh, market their products uh, in Bangladesh uh, easily, uh, not only for Bangladeshi market, but also the South Asia. Southeast Asian market, uh, they can uh, invest and they can uh, manufacture their own products and use Bangladesh as a launching pad, uh, not just for Bangladeshi market, but also markets around. Uh, we uh, actually consider uh, the U.S. an uh, important partner uh, in our development journey, and the trade and investment is the major pillar of uh, this cooperation uh, because Bangladesh is no longer a um, aid-dependent country, but if you like, it's a trade-dependent country. And we don't discriminate between uh, export and import. Of course, we want to sell to the U.S. market, but we are willing to buy from U.S. market too. Uh, so uh, we uh, uh, really uh, would need to build our economic partnership based on a win-win uh, format. And to this end, uh, our governments may uh, need to expand necessary policy, policy support. And ultimately, we should be working uh, to promote uh, the private sector cooperation. Ambassador Islam, thank you so much. Ambassador Miller, thank you. Uh, we don't want to take too much time out of your out of your busy schedule, so we should probably conclude there. Look, we're just so excited um, to be able to launch the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council on the margins of Bangladesh's birthday, 50th birthday, um, yes. and it is a 
it's again, as I mentioned earlier, a real testament to the relationship. It's a real testament to the confidence that the business community has in Bangladesh. Um, the entire board um, of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council is really looking forward to maintaining a very constructive dialogue with the government of Bangladesh, with the U.S. government, as we all together chart an, an ambitious path forward um, and take this relationship to the next level. So, ambassadors, thank you both for being with us today, and, and we look forward to our close co collaboration and cooperation with you in the coming months. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. So, Sid, this is the end. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Any... My name is Sid Mera, and I'm the director of the U.S. Bangladesh Business Council. Thank you, Ambassador Morantis, for moderating a fantastic conversation with Ambassador Islam and Ambassador Miller. What a really great way to close out today's program on a powerful note, that the U.S.-Bangladesh oh, economic gosh. partnership is on the rise and has significant potential for new investment, trade, and business opportunities. Throughout this year, the U.S.-Bangladesh Business Council will be expanding our engagements with both governments creating new advocacy to strengthen the trade and investment ecosystem and develop opportunities to partner with the Bangladesh business community. On behalf of Nisha Biswal, Myron Brilliant and the US Chamber family, I want to thank first, the Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh for inaugurating the council today. To thank all of our speakers, including Dr. Ahmed Kaikos, Minister of Commerce, Tipu Munshi, uh, and advisor Sajib Wazid, who have played a really significant role in supporting us. I also want to thank our board of directors and our members for being part of the launch today. I particularly want to thank our platinum sponsors, Chevron, Accelerate Energy, MetLife, Visa, as well as our gold sponsors, Abbott, Chenier, Facebook, Google, MasterCard, and Uber. The Bangladesh Council, and today's event would not be possible without your support. Lastly, thank you all for joining us today. We look forward to bringing you more high energy events throughout the year. In the meantime, don't forget to tune in and follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Uh, we look forward to hosting you for future events. Thank you.